example, I am currently an English as a second language and English as a foreign language independent consultant. People need to start with what their preferences are. Uh, there are a variety of places that ESL teachers work in the United States. However, there are a great many adults uh, in the United States who also need to learn English. And so uh, there are lots of possibilities for adult education uh, at community colleges, uh, especially at uh, universities. Sometimes these courses are held at public libraries, uh, community buildings. There's also um, a growing field of English as a second language for pre-K children, children who are in early childhood programs and who need to learn English before they start their school experiences. They may be wanting to look for a master's program in T-E-S-O-L, teaching English to speakers of other languages. If that's the case, I think they want to look at universities that foster very strong pedagogy. Um, I would prefer that they look at universities that have strong field experiences because young people going out to teach for the first time really do need a very strong field experience, perhaps a mentor teacher uh, that can help them in those first years of teaching. If, on the other hand, you're looking for adult education experiences, then you may want to find uh, a community college nearby that has uh, very strong media centers with uh, computer availability that could be used with adult learners who would like to learn English and also computing skills at the same time. I think that universities are very happy to see young people who have some kind of second language experience of their own. For example, if you, if you are a bilingual student, I think you'll have a leg up. Or if you've been able to learn a language by living outside the United States, that's another possibility. Uh, or if you have studied a second language, uh, that shows an interest in languages right off the bat. Uh, I think they're interested in people who have multicultural backgrounds, people who have lived in multicultural environments, uh, because that shows that they have an empathy for the population that they'll be working in with eventually. Well, I mentioned empathy, which I think is very important for any teacher. Um, I think tenacity is a fabulous characteristic for a teacher. Uh, what I mean by tenacity is the ability to stick with your students until they've actually mastered what it is that you're trying to learn or teach them. Learning a language is a very long and difficult process for everyone, even children, although people think it isn't. It's very difficult. And so tenacity, empathy, and also a sense of social justice. The idea that children who speak a second language will never be able to achieve at a high academic level unless they also learn academic language. Well, if you're looking to be a K-12 ESL teacher in the United States, what I know is that the ESL population is the fastest growing population in the U.S. I think there are more than 5 million children as of this year that are currently enrolled in ESL programs. There are a great many more who are bilingual or may have recently exited bilingual programs, but still need continuing support from teachers. And so this is an area that is very much in demand. I think that teachers who have content area certification in science and math, especially at the secondary level, are extremely high in demand because we need teachers who are content certified but also have an ESL certification in order to teach students at the secondary level. So those teachers are very eagerly sought after. The K-12 field is one where teachers are in demand 
it requires a bachelor's degree and also you, typically uh, um, an ESL master's uh, degree on top of that. In addition, there is adult uh, language. There are adult language classes that are held in community colleges and public buildings uh, in many, many towns uh, and cities, especially in the large cities across the U.S. There are university uh, opportunities for teaching graduate students. There are also opportunities at publishing companies uh, for writing student texts. Uh, there are opportunities for writing professional development materials to train teachers uh, in uh, the strategies and techniques for teaching English as a second language. It's a um, very diverse field, and if you're at all interested in working overseas, there are multiple opportunities abroad as well. There are um, multiple things happening. As I mentioned, the ESL population is growing by leaps and bounds. It's growing faster than any other population in the K-12 field. On the other hand, there are many school districts who are using ESL teachers as consultants rather than as instructors in the classroom. So that's happening in a lot of school districts where they're feeling the pinch in terms of not having enough money to have multiple ESL teachers in the system. I think one of the biggest challenges for all teachers is uh, standardized testing. We're constantly confronted with uh, testing which requires that we teach students at a very high level, a very high language level, very high cognitive level, and to teach to high standards. And then we're testing students in a context that is extremely abstract. And so ESL students are at a disadvantage in those standardized testing situations. Uh, it's very challenging to try to educate children to that level of English within a short time. The other challenge that goes along with that is the challenge of the learning gap that still exists. And so even though uh, Hispanic students in general have made great strides in reading and in mathematics over the last 10 years, there's still a major gap between the achievement level of Hispanic students and their English-speaking counterparts. And the gap is approximately a two-year gap, which in spite of all of the things that we've tried to do over the last couple of years to raise the level has not gone away. So that's a very high challenge for us. Right now I'm the chairperson of the Professional Development Committee. Uh, our committee is charged with providing professional development opportunities for our membership. Belonging to a network like that, the major uh, opportunity that we have to get together is our national, international conference, which is held in March of every year. Uh, it's a three to four day conference with many opportunities for professional development. TESOL sponsors symposia in countries outside the United States that enable foreign language professionals to present their uh, research. They also offer here within the U.S. every summer something called the TESOL Academy, which is very helpful for K-12 teachers to get together and work on practical skills-based kinds of learning, listening, speaking, reading, and writing to children at various levels. Uh, we also have online uh, symposia and academies that are available uh, to our members. We've recently, within the past year, started an online certificate program where we offer 130 hours of instruction in a core program. It enables uh, someone who's new to the profession to specialize if they choose in 10 hours for young learners or in 10 hours of instruction for older learners. 